On today's episode of Secrets to Scaling Your E-Commerce Brand, I am going to be having a battle royale. It is just going to be with myself today, <laughs> but the battle royale is going to be between Clavio and Senlane. Really interested to have this conversation. It's a question that I get from a lot of people out there of like, why would I ever switch from Clavio, right? Um, it's a very interesting and nuanced conversation that I want to have. A lot of people think, oh, it's just Twitter bros out there saying a bunch of stuff about Sendlane because they're getting some kind of commission or something like that. I think that there's a lot more out there than that, but I want to get into a lot of these topics today. If you guys have ever thought about switching from Clavio over to Sendlane, or if you're like, Clavio, Sendlane, I don't use any of them. I think you still want to hear this conversation. There's some really interesting nuanced stuff that I want to talk about. And I want to talk about some of my experience, and I want to talk about some of different levels of business and how they've switched or decided to stay with Clavio. Uh, I want to have the entire conversation uh, out there. Guys, you are not going to want to miss this one. Hey guys, Jordan West back with another episode of Secrets to Scaling Your E-Commerce Brand. Looking forward to having this conversation today with you guys. This is a segment that I am going to be having a lot more often now. I'm going to be talking about different softwares. Or I'm going to be talking about why some softwares are good, why some softwares uh, are better than others, different use cases for them based on your business size and some of your business needs. It's interesting. Software questions are something that I get all of the time, so much so that I was actually thinking about starting an entire other podcast and an entire other business to do with software. Uh, I probably still am going to do that, let's be totally honest. But in the meantime, I want to start here on Secrets of Scaling, and I want to talk to you guys about some of these different softwares and some of the different pluses and minuses from them. A couple of things that you need to know on my side, just for transparency purposes. If any of the links that I have down below have anything appended to the end of them, that means that it's most likely uh, an affiliate link. I will not be comparing softwares where I have one affiliate link versus the other because I don't want you guys to think that I'm somehow favoring one kind of software over the other. So the affiliate links allow us to continue to do this podcast, right? That is how we're able to, you know, I don't know if you guys know how many the ridiculous amount of hours that I spent doing this podcast, but this is how we keep the lights on here is with sponsors and then some of those affiliate links. So in case you guys see that, just know I will only do it. I have an affiliate link for Clavio. I have an affiliate link for Sendlane. So either way, I don't really care what you use. What I want to show you guys is the reason why we're using different softwares in general, right? It's really, really important the kinds of email software or, or the email software that you use. I go back in time and, and I think this is like 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. And I don't know if you guys remember this happening, but MailChimp and Shopify had a really big issue when it came to some data sharing. And so MailChimp and Shopify sort of split up. And it was really interesting because the vast majority of us were all on MailChimp because MailChimp was actually an awesome platform at the time. And I remember hearing about Clavio and thinking, ah, oh, I wonder if I'm going to make the switch over to Clavio. And so I decided to, and it was an incredible platform at the time. Now, the UI, as far as I was concerned at the time, was really funny comparatively coming from MailChimp. MailChimp's UI was just incredible. The user experience was phenomenal on MailChimp. And moving over to Clavio, you're like, okay, I get it. It's a really powerful software that has so much data in it. So it's going to be ugly. And I just expected that they would switch and make it more pretty over time and make it more user friendly and one that like, you know, my staff could use and that normal people could use. And they didn't. They did never do that. Even going public now, they did not do that. And that's always kind of been just a little bit strange to me that they didn't ever do that. And yet, you know, the vast majority of you guys are out there using Clavio. So what I want to do is I just want to do a really fair side by side comparison of the two softwares. And I want to talk about the different use cases. Now, in all transparency, I have switched all of my businesses over to Sendlane and it's been phenomenal. I want to first talk about my experience switching over to Sendlane. Number one, whenever we would have an issue over on Clavio. So let's actually, let's just start with customer support because I, and, and I'm going to bring in some of my anecdotes in here as well. But whenever we would have a customer support issue at Clavio, we could not get a hold of anyone. I don't think that they even have customer support as far as I know. Like, and I'm not, I'm not saying that to slam them. Like, I just have never even seen that they have any sort of customer support versus when we switched over to Sendlane, I got a dedicated Slack channel with a customer service rep. And here's the crazy thing. And I talked to Jimmy, the CEO about this. And I was like, how do you guys get back to us so fast? Or why do you continually hop in? So Jimmy will oftentimes hop in. Now, don't expect Jimmy to ever hop into your channels. That is just, I, I, I we have a special relationship and that's, that's really nice that he's able to do that for me. But 
it's incredible to see how ridiculously fast they get back to us within there. Guys, it's within like 30 seconds that they're getting back to any sort of issue that our team has. Do you know what that does for me as a business owner? Like, I just feel so ridiculously taken care of on the customer service side versus Clavio. They just, there's just no customer service. I don't even know, like, you just have to go into the help documentation. You have to have a PhD in computer science. It was like, what is the word? Because I don't have a PhD in it, but you need to, to actually figure out some of the big issues that are happening on that side. Deliverability. Let's talk about deliverability. And I'm not going to get into a lot of the like the nuances of the deliverability just because I can't speak to it in the same way that an email expert can. I am in no way an email expert when I am as a business owner who understands how to make money and how to not make money in certain circumstances as well. But when we look at what our deliverability was in our companies before and after, it is astronomically different. Now, what I'm looking at to judge that is number one, open rate. Now, open rate is like a lot of times you're getting false positives on, on open rate from all of the different uh, inboxes, but, but not, I'm not just looking there. What I'm looking at is the click through rate. We're seeing so much more traffic clicking and coming to the site since switching to Sendlane, which is phenomenal. We also decided to unify. Now, Clavio, that's not like a special when it comes to, to Sendlane, but because Clavio does it as well. Now, one big mistake that Clavio made, and I'm going to, I'm going to air some grievances, guys. This is my, my festivist grievances. I'm ranting. When Clavio first took on SMS, they decided to use a really interesting pricing model that to me started the end of my love affair with Clavio. I used to really love Clavio. And then they started to do some interesting business practices that made me think, Oh, you guys don't believe in win-win. What you believe in is just charging as much as you can because you want to go public at some point, which they did. Awesome. That's great. If you're into just making money, go ahead. Why don't you get into finance? Because that's like, you can just go do that. But if you want to build really cool stuff, I don't necessarily, I just don't really agree with this. And so their original pricing model when they first came out with SMS was seven cents per SMS. And I said to them, I said, you know, there's a bunch of other companies out there. There's Attentive, Postscript. There's all these companies, SMS Bump. There was all these ones at the time. I was like, what makes you think that you can charge seven cents? She's like, well, it's just a really great product. I'm like, no, it's a commodity. SMS is a commodity. There is nothing special about it. You are the middleman between you and Twilio creating a nice user interface. Like, just so you guys know, you can go straight to Twilio and you could do it for way cheaper yourself. But I really do believe that having it unified is really an incredible thing. So just, just that, that's, that was the early days of their pricing was the seven cents. I have no idea what they charge now, but to me, it was just such a turnoff that it was like, you think you can charge seven times more for a commodity because you're Clavio? I don't think so. That did not sit well with me and was, yeah, just one of those other things with, when I think about sentiment, and this is something I talked about today, I think it was on LinkedIn or Twitter, somewhere over there. One of the things I wanted to bring up was we're going to get into the facts, right, of Clavio versus Sunlink. But I also want to get into the sentiment of, of these two softwares, right? The sentiment on Clavio is that they will not change. Um, they have done the same thing since I came on board, whenever that was, 2017, 2018. And yes, they've got lots of data. I don't really think that they actually have that much more data than, than Sunlink does. They just kind of like, it's just a little bit more black boxy is what it kind of seems like. And the sentiment is not great when it comes to Clavio. I, and in fact, when a lot of people were starting to make the switch over to Sendlane, one of their execs reached out and said, hey, can we have a meeting? And, and I said, absolutely. Like, hell, let's totally have a meeting. And they berated me for about half an hour on why Clavio was so much better. And I'm like, oh, I thought you guys wanted to learn why people are making the switch, not tell me to switch back. I mean, I'm just one person. Like, and, and that's not how you make an impression. I since have had multiple meetings with the people at Clavio and some of them listen and but most of them just tell so for me that is just a massive massive turnoff when it comes to people that i want to work with and so that's one one aspect of it doesn't mean that you should switch just for that reason i just wanted to give you a, some, some personal anecdotes about some of my experiences with the the two different companies again remember i have no horse in this race whatsoever i'm not an investor actually in either of these companies though i should have been i mean it's kind of ridiculous that i wasn't <laughs> what a bad business move Anyway, I should have, but I'll get on, on Sendlane's next round. That's what I'm going to do. But anyway, I, I've got no horse in this race at all, other than the fact that I really, really like both of them. 
as softwares, but I really like the team at Sendlane just so much more. So let's just talk about some of the differences here. So let's talk about the pricing. So interesting pricing model on both sides. Clearview's pricing is based on the number of total subscribers. So whatever subscribers you bring in, they used to have an unlimited plan and I loved it because you could bring in a certain amount of subscribers, but you'd send as many emails as you wanted. Now they have it all capped and that's ridiculous. It just was, it was like, oh, so you're charging per subscriber and per send. That is really when I started to look into some other platforms because I was noticing what was happening is they were auto upgrading my account constantly and what ended up happening was we were paying thousands of dollars more a month and we had no idea. As a business owner, it was a really, really bad, bad time because we were spending thousands of dollars more than we actually thought that we were going to because we weren't segmenting our list like we would have if we would have known that it was per cent. Now, Sendlane, they just have a flat, you fall into a certain amount of sends, you know, maybe it's a million a month, maybe it's 10 million a month, maybe it's 100 million a month, whatever it is. That's what you're getting charged on. You're getting charged on what you use. I love it. It doesn't matter how many contacts you bring over. So you can bring them over. You can re-engage them if you uh, want to. That is the way that their pricing works. So really, really like uh, the pricing on that side. Let's talk about some of the, the pros of either. So I would say the pros of Clavio is the comprehensive reporting and the extensive integrations that they have. They have integrations with literally everything. Who does not want to look to Clavio to... To have an integration. Now, interesting, Sendlane does not have nearly as many integrations, but they are really getting there. They are working on it. I think I saw a post from Jimmy, the C, uh, CEO. Actually, he might have stepped down as CEO. He's I think he might be over at CRO or something now. But Jimmy is the, the, the founder over at Sendlane, incredible guy. When he talked about, I believe it's 80 new integrations that they have this quarter alone that they're, that they're attempting right now. It's incredible. I tell every single SaaS company that I talk to, I said, if you don't plug into, Clay, into Sendlane, Sendling, Clavio, either one of those two, we're not working together. And, and I just told them, I said, the tidal wave is coming. You need to integrate with Sendling. And so they have a ton of inbound on those integrations as well, which is really, really cool. So I would say at this point, though, uh, integrations wise on Clavio, you're getting a lot more integration. Everything integrates with it. And it integrates absolutely seamlessly. They also have a little bit more advanced segmentation over on Clavio. Do you need all the segmentation? That's the real question. And I found that I did not actually need to have that granular of segmentation. Let's talk about the cons of both of them. Number one, Clavio, like we talked about before, sluggish customer support and a massively steep learning curve. Clavio is it is difficult. This is why people hire email marketing agencies. We we actually are are in the middle right now of propping up our, our email side at Upgrowth, which is really, really fun because we understand that customers are having a ridiculously hard time, even on Stanlane as well, right? It's just difficult to know how to create emails that actually move uh, the needle. I would say as far as cons are concerned on, on the Stanlane side, they have a bit of a higher entry price. And that's just because that's just the way that, that they started comparatively. And there's limited customization options comparatively. Now they are building at a momentous rate. I think that is the difference right now. It's like, yeah, any of the stuff that they don't have right now, they will, right? They really will in the future. Let's talk about one thing that's interesting with Clavio. They have these universal blocks that go between. As far as I know, and the most recent information that I have, that is not something that Sendlane has, though I do believe that, it is, that it's on their product road. Universal blocks are really great to be able to put in between different emails it makes things a lot easier. You have like, say, a universal footer, a universal header, all of these different things. When you change one, it changes on every single email. That's really important. Mobile editing. This is actually something I loved with MailChimp. Man, their mobile app was so good. You could do like one button and say, send to people who didn't open. I love that. Sorry, I know we're not doing MailChimp, but I love that. Yes, Clavio has, has mobile. Is it awesome? No. Is Semlin's awesome on mobile? No. To me, it's not really, yeah, it's, it's not really a, a huge comparison. Now let's talk about pop up and sign up forms. So, Clavio, I think, is really winning when it comes to pop up and sign up forms. Again, they've had you know, quite a head start. They're publicly traded now, so they've got a lot of cash to be able to do this. I actually don't like either of them. <laughs> I actually love AMP. So, a uh, big shout out to my friends over at AMP. I would highly suggest using a third party for that. Since we moved over to AMP, 
our email collection rate is so much higher. Every single week I'm looking and it's about triple what it used to be our email and SMS. Absolutely love the guys over at AMP. So I don't even want to talk about either of these pop-up or sign-up forms. They're just not worth talking about. Let's talk about, okay, so we've talked about integrations. Oh, in-app reviews. So, so do they have rev, a review app? Yes, both of them have that. Sendlane just launched theirs. I believe that Clavio actually came in afterwards and also launched theirs. Both of them are great. Again, I'm actually a big fan of this old school review platform uh, that I love called Shopper Approve. So many reviews with Shopper Approve. I don't know what exactly it is in their software that works so well. But it's very much worthwhile to pay that little extra. But in the meantime, Sendlane and Clavio have reviews built into them, kind of like a lot of the other apps are tending to do. So it's pretty great. Now, let's talk about reporting, reporting and analytics. Much more detailed reporting when it comes to Clavio. If you want to know the like nuts and bolts, the like like the smallest nuances, stick with Clavio. I would say that the reporting on the Sendlane side is a little bit more minimalistic, but I will take the trade for customer support and the help that we get through Sendlane versus the detailed reporting over on Clavio. I'd much rather be able to talk to a human about my issues, which are my issues are vast, everyone. Just kidding. But, but I would much rather have that as the trade-off. Let's talk a little bit about pricing. So let's talk about the email and SMS plan. So as far as the most recent information that I have, because again, I haven't been with Clavio in a while, but whatever I could scrape. Their plan started at 60 bucks a month for both email and SMS. That includes 15,000 monthly email sends. They do also have email only plans. They do have a free plan as well, which is up to 500 monthly email sends and 250 contacts. Again, you know, really just goes up and up and up from there. They also have the customer data platform on Clavio. Again, I can't really speak to that too much because Semlin does not have a CDP. But what I can tell you is that as you scale with Clavio, things get really really expensive. I wish that I could bring that up as you get, you know, higher and higher. It is just astronomical how high, how high your pricing goes. Let's talk about Sendly's pricing. So they have some standard plans where basically it's all based on how much you send. I don't want to talk about my plan just because I think that I'm on an old plan. So we'll talk a little bit more about, about this, but it's actually very reasonable when you talk about some of their bigger plans. One of the stats that I have here is 1.75 million cents for about 1500 bucks a month. I think it's gone up a little bit from there. So much more reasonable than Clavio's pricing at that point. Again, I would switch based on pricing. I like, yes, Sendling's pricing is way better. That's not why we made the switch. The biggest reason that we made the switch is that they care. They actually care. I, at the end of the day, like guys, you can go back to MailChimp if you want to, like there's, there's that too. I think what it comes down to at the end of the day is, do you feel like it's worthwhile to make the big switch? I chatted with somebody on my podcast earlier today, actually, Nathan from Pipsticks, and hopefully you guys have had a chance to listen to that episode. And we were just talking about what that lift actually looks like to switch. And it's a lot. Is it worth it? Yes. Have I seen massive brands making the switch? There's massive brands making the switch over to Sendlane. They are the horse that I am betting on in, in the next couple of years. I think that they're going to do incredibly well. They're going to build incredible things. The team over there is absolutely phenomenal. I think it just comes down to, you, you know, what you're comfortable with and what your values are, right? So for me, I really love small, scrappy startup teams. And that is what Sendlane is all about right now. So in the end, you know, I made my decision. I switched over to Sendlane. Again, I've got no dog in this race. I just want to see the best for everyone. But in this head-to-head -head battle, I will choose Sendlane all day because of the people. If it comes to just pure functionality and you want to have, you want to have that, just stick with Clavio and that's totally fine. But if you want that really white glove, hands-on approach, and you want them to help you, even when, you know, all these Gmail changes are coming up. And probably by the time you guys listen to this, some of those are going to be, you know, actually in effect. Let me tell you, the Sendling team walked us through the entire thing. Can you imagine them doing that on Clavio? Like, I, I don't even think I've ever received like a customer service email from them before. They walked us through all of it. So if you want that white glove hands-on approach, highly recommend moving over um, to Sendling. But if you want to keep all of the integrations that you have and you're very happy with the status quo to stay with Clavio. That's great.
I hope this is helpful for you guys. If you guys like this episode, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to do more of these episodes. I really, really love talking about software, talking about the different ways that we use software. It really matters. The software we use really matters for the health of our business. And that's really what I want to, to bring up. So thank you guys again so much. Everybody who listens to this, I just appreciate it so much. Seeing the thousands of people that are listening to different episodes, I'm just shocked. So thank you for continuing to put up with me. I really appreciate that. And if I could just ask a quick favor of you guys, if I can get you guys to uh, give a review on Spotify, if you guys are listening on Spotify and give us a quick review over there, that would be amazing. We've got 20 reviews right now. I would love to get to 100 by the end of this year. That would be absolutely massive. Apple, we have no problem with over there. But if you could give me a little bit of love over on Spotify, that would be great. And that is my only favor I ask of you guys. Appreciate you all so, so much. Have a great day.